Hello and welcome to another video of the RPA Challenge series. In our previous video, we added the skill of document understanding to a bot, wherein we used the intelligent OCR and the machine learning extractor packages from UiPath. In this video, we'll use a learning from the previous video to solve this fourth RPA challenge, that is the invoice extraction. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the challenge. Like in all the previous challenges, we again have the instruction on the left hand side. And to start this challenge, you need to click on the start button. The goal of this challenge is to go through each and every table row distributed across different pages and download and extract data from only those invoices where the due date has passed or is today. There are basically two kinds of invoices and the sample can be seen here. From these downloaded invoices, you would have to extract the invoice number, the invoice date, the company name, and the total due amount. And this entire cycle of data extraction will continue until the data is extracted from all the due invoices. The extracted data is then saved in a CSV file which has predefined headers and the format can again be downloaded from here. And in order to check your result, all you need to do is you need to submit the CSV file. So now that we understand the challenge, let's open UiPath Studio and understand how to solve this challenge. Well. The data extraction in this RPA challenge will be happening at two levels. At the first level, we need to extract the data from RPA challenges web page in order to identify the due invoices. And at the second level, we would be extracting data like the invoice date, the invoice number, the company's name, and the total due amount from these downloaded invoices. Now, in order to extract the data from the web page, we'll be using the data scraping method from UiPath. And for that, let's open a new sequence and call it web page extraction. And now let's use the data scraping method to extract data from the different rows of this table. So just click on next here and we'll first indicate any of the element from this table. And if you see here, there's a pop-up which says that the indicated element is a part of a data table. And if we want to extract the entire table, so if I click on yes, you see that I get all the due date and also the ID of all the invoices which are there on this page. From this extracted data, it would become very easy for me to compare the due date with the present date and identify which of the invoices are due. But at the same time, I don't have the link to the URL of these invoices. So in order to get the link of this invoice, all I need to do is scrap this entire table and start from scratch. So I'll just click on back. And now we'll be indicating each element one by one. So like again, we'll be indicating this element. And instead of saying yes, we'll click on no. And then we'll again indicate the next element, which is this one here. And with this, it would be able to extract the ID column. So if you see the ID column has been highlighted and I would rename this column as ID and click on next. But this is not the only information that I'm interested in. Rather, I'm also interested in the due date and the URL of the invoice. So in order to get the due date and the invoice URL, I'll just click on extract correlated data. And at this point, I would be indicating the next element from the due date. And after indicating the first element, I need to again indicate the second element, which is this one here. And you see the entire column of due date has been highlighted. I would again rename it as due date and just click on next. So in our table now we have the ID and the due date and the next thing that I'm interested is in the invoice URL. So let's again click on the extract correlated data and indicate the first element and again click on next and now indicate the second element. Let's just click that we want the invoice 
And since we are interested in the URL behind this invoice, I would also check this box where it says extract URL and let's name it invoice URL and click on next. You would see here that the, both the columns are empty. The reason that both the columns are empty is because we had indicated the entire box to be extracted, but instead we should have just indicated on this download button. So let's just go back and make the correction. So we'll again click on the extract correlated data, but this time instead of selecting the box, we would be selecting just the download button. Then again click on next and now indicate the second download button. And since under the invoice column there is no data as such, so I'm not interested in the text behind it, but instead I'm just interested in the URL. And let's rename it as invoice URL. And as you click on next, you will see that the entire URL of each of these invoices is also extracted in this database. Now as a next step, what I can do is I can loop through each of these rows and where of the invoices have passed the due date, we could then use this URL in order to download the invoices. But this is not done yet. Since we know that the data table is distributed over three different pages and we need to extract the data from all these three different pages. So just click on finish and there would be a pop-up to ask if the data is spanning over multiple pages. Since it is yes in this case, I'll just click on yes and indicate the next button which is this one here. And with this, if you see inside the extract structured data activity, you would have a data table that has been given as an output. So now let's just have a look at the extracted data. So just go to activity panel and search for output data table. And the input to this output data table would be our extracted data table. And we would be saving this extracted data table into a text. Let's call it a temp. And let's print this temp variable using a message box. Now that we could extract the data and we're also converting the extracted data into a text file. So let's just see what is the output in the message box. So I'll just click on debug file here. And at this point, it would be extracting the data from all the three pages. And if you see, we have the data extracted from all the three different pages. Now in order to loop to the data table, we need a for each activity. So let's bring it in. And since we want to loop through the extracted data table, so let's pass that variable. And at this point, we want to compare the due date inside every row to the present date. And if this date is less than the present date, then we want to extract the data for this particular invoice. So let's just remove the sequence and call in the if activity. And we want to compare the today's date. So which is nothing but the row and it's under the column name called due date. And this due date should be less than or equal to the today's date, which is nothing but the date time dot now. But if you see here, we would be getting an error because the date time is a date time variable, whereas the row dot due date is actually a string variable. And so for that, we need to convert this variable also into a date time variable. Let's just convert this object into a string. And now we'll be using one of the functions of the date time object, which is called parse exact. In order to convert this particular object or this string into a date time variable. And in this, as you can see here, you need to pass three parameters. First is the string that needs to be converted and then the format of the string. And as a third, we need to provide the format provider. So we'll just have a look into this. So put a comma here and let's have a look at the format. 
So if you remember from the web page, the format is basically in the form DD, MM, and YYYY. So let's put that here. So the format is nothing but DD, and then there's a dash. Then we have month variable, and then we have the year, which is a four digit year. And once we have this, we need to provide the format provider, which in this case is nothing but system dot globalization dot culture info and then we have the invariant culture also don't forget to close the bracket so once that there we have our if statement so what we have just done is let's let me just make it a bit bigger so we have done nothing but just converted our variable which was the row due date to string and then we have converted the string into a date time variable using the date time dot parse exact function so after doing that let's just uh, put a message box and if the due date is less than the present date so in this case we need to read the invoice and the invoice is due and if not then the invoice is not due for the payment so let's just run this workflow and see if you're getting the right information out and for that just click on the debug file here and wait for the data extraction which is going to take a bit of time and since in this case we are already on the third page so it would just be extracting from the third page and not on the first two pages so this needs to be remembered so whenever you're starting the data extraction just make sure that you're on the first page but just for the demonstration let's just stay on the third page and see what is the output so in this case you would be just getting four invoices because you were already on the third page so just click on OK and for the first one it says the invoice is due for payment so let's go and have a look at the web page itself so if you see the first date is in May so yes it's due and the next one is also due but the third one should not be due because it's in August and the fourth one should again be due so the second one is due as well the third one should not be due and the fourth one should be due again so if you see our if else statement and the for each loop is working fine and now we need to replace the message box with our invoice extraction function so now let's just work on that but before i move ahead i just need to make one point here so if you see here the date time parse exact function is something that does not come directly from your path it would be very easy to find something like this on the internet so this is what if an I did, since I don't always remember the exact parameters that needs to be passed within a function, all you need to do is just go on Google and search for this particular function and you would get exactly what you want. So now let's just move ahead and have a look into the invoice extraction function. So if you remember, as I've already mentioned, that for the document understanding, I've already done a detailed video. And if you're not seen that already, then I would recommend you to first have a look in this video and the link is attached here and after seeing this video the next part would be very easy for you to understand since i've already done this i would not again go into details but i've already created the workflow and let's just have a look at this so our invoice extractor has a load taxonomy function and then we have the digitized document activity which converts the downloaded invoice into a digital format into a text file which could be read by any machine and after doing that, we have a data extraction scope. Within this scope, we are doing nothing but we are extracting the data from the invoices. And within this data extraction scope, I already have two templates. And these two templates are corresponding to the two different samples that we get from the website. And the name here denotes the name of the supplier or the vendor. And thereafter, as a next step, you also have a present validation station which a lot of you might think is going to slow the process 
but for a process where we are extracting data from invoices and then inputting this data into some kind of an ERP system, it becomes very important that we have a human in the loop who validates each data that has been extracted because it would become very difficult if you're paying wrong amount to your vendors. And that is the reason why we have the present validation station in my extraction workflow. And once the data has been extracted, then this data needs to be saved into a table. And this table would then be used to save data into the CSV file. One thing that I did not explain here is the taxonomy. So for taxonomy, all you need to do is you need to go to taxonomy manager and create the taxonomy of the documents that you want to extract the data from. And since in our case, we'll be extracting data from invoices, we have invoices here. And if you remember from the challenge, we have to extract invoice number, the invoice date, the company name, and the total due amount. And I've added all of these four fields into the taxonomy of invoices. And for each field, we are also defining the kind of data type that this particular field has. For example, in case of invoice number, it's a number. I would like to reiterate here that if you don't understand what a taxonomy is, then I would again recommend you to go back to my previous video and have a look into it because there I've explained in detail what is the use of taxonomy and how we define a taxonomy. So well, that's all that we have for the invoice extractor workflow. And just for the demonstration purpose, I will just pass one of the documents to this workflow and see what has been extracted. So let me just go back to one of the invoices and just copy the path. And this path I will pass as a variable to this particular workflow. And let's just go into arguments and pass it here. So I'm giving a default value to this particular document path. In the actual workflow, the document path would be the path of the downloaded invoice, which would be getting automatically once a particular invoice has been downloaded. So now since we have defined the default value of the document, let's just go and run it and see what kind of data has been extracted. So right now we were in the digitized document activity and then we have come to the data extraction scope. And once the data has been extracted, now we are inside the present validation station. So this is a validation stage wherein a human has to validate the data that has been extracted. So in our case, at first step, since we're extracting the invoice number, so let's check the invoice number if that's correct. So it's here, so it's 284228. And then in the invoice date, we again have the right information, which is 2019-06-28, which is again correct here. And then let's have a look at the company name, which Aeon LLC, that is correct as well. And then the total due amount, which is 1800, it is also extracted correctly. So once the data has been extracted, all you need to do is click on save. And in this case, it would be a user or someone from the accounts department who would be validating these invoices if the data has been extracted correctly. And then just click on save. And you see here, the exact data that has been extracted is being converted into a data table. And we'd be using this data table to save the CSV file. So let's just click on OK. That's all for the invoice extractor. So as a next step, we'll go into the main workflow and see different steps on how we are using what we just saw in order to run the entire workflow. So here's our main workflow, which has been divided into six steps. The very first step is the start challenge sequence where we are opening the browser and clicking on the start button. Then after we have the extract invoices DT, where we'll be extracting the table from the RPA challenges web page. And we'll be saving this extracted data into a data table called invoices DT. Thereafter, we'll be adding some columns to this invoices DT data table. And these columns are nothing but the mandatory fields that needs to be extracted from the invoices. Once that's done, then we'll be looping through each of these rows of the invoices data table. And wherever the due date has been passed, we would be extracting data from those invoices. And once the data has been extracted, we would also be saving this extracted data into the invoices DT data table. Thereafter, we'd be cleaning the invoices data table, where we'll remove all the rows for the invoices where the due date has not been passed. Thereafter, we'll be saving this data table also into a CSV file. And then, and in order to end this challenge, we would be submitting this particular CSV file. Let's just go ahead and run this entire workflow. 
since I'll be running this into a debug mode, let me just uh, divide my screen so that we can also see how the workflow is moving from one step to the another. But before we do that, I would want to also show you that I have added a print invoice DT sequence between each of the sequences because I wanted to show you also how the invoices DT is changing as we move from one sequence to another. So let's just run this workflow in debug mode. And as a first step, we'll be loading the RPA challenge web page and starting the challenge. And then we would be extracting the data from this particular web page by going through different pages. And this extracted data would then be saved into a data table called invoices DT, which would soon be displayed on the screen as a message box. So this is the data that has been extracted from this particular web page. And as a next step, we would be adding new columns to this particular data table. So let's just click on OK. As you can see here, new column names have been added to this particular data table, namely the invoice date, the company name, the invoice number, and the total due amount. And also the data pertaining to each of these columns is still empty. This data would be updated in the next sequence, where we'll be extracting only for those particular invoices where the due date has been passed. So before I click OK on this message box, let's have a look into the sequence where we're extracting data from the invoices. And if you see here, there's a for each loop, wherein we loop through each and every row of this particular invoice DT data table. And then we have an if statement where we check the due date for that particular, in, for that particular row. And if the due date has been passed, then we download that particular invoice and save it locally, and then extract the data from that particular invoice. If you see here in the arguments, we are passing the document path of the downloaded invoice as a parameter. And as an output, we are getting the response data table, which contains nothing but the invoice number, the invoice date, the company name, and the total due amount for that particular row. And as we get that response data table, we use this response data table to save this inside our invoice DT. So now let's just click on OK and proceed further. And if you see here, this is the first invoice that is being downloaded. And then we go into the present validation station where we have all the attributes that needs to be extracted from that particular invoice. So first we have the invoice number, and then we have the invoice date, which is here, and then the company name, and in the end, we have the total due amount. Now all you need to do is just click on continue and save, and then this particular loop will go on and on till the time all the invoices for which the due date has passed has been extracted. So once all the documents have been downloaded and the data has been extracted, so you would see here that we have the data table and also the values, for example, the invoice number, the invoice date, the company name and the total due amount has been updated. But still there are a few rows where this data is missing. And these rows are only where the due date has still not been passed. So for example, if we see the row here, wherein the date is 23rd of June, and since the today's date is 21st of June, we are not extracting data for this particular row. So as a next step, we would be cleaning and removing all these particular rows out of this particular data table. So as I click on OK, this is the clean data table where we have removed all the rows where the due date had not been passed yet. So let's just click on OK. And as a next step, we would be submitting the response CSV. And just click on OK. And with this, we have submitted the CSV file and our RPA challenge is done. Well, this brings us to the end of this RPA challenge. And for those who are interested in running this workflow, just check the description for the link to the Git repository. And I hope these videos are helpful. And if you think they have added some value to your RPA skills, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. So see you again in the next video. Till then, keep automating.